Hi, welcome back. I thought I'd do a short follow-up video to my UK knife law video, as there were lots of questions and comments to that video, and I thought it might be useful to do a short follow-up. If you missed the video, I will link it in the card now, so you can go and watch that first. And also, please do subscribe and hit the bell icon if you haven't already, as that really does help my channel grow. Now, first of all, neither this video nor the original video should be taken as formal legal advice, as every situation turns on its own facts, and you should seek individual advice if you are unsure. Firstly, and just to recap the basic legal position, which is that it is an offence to be carrying a pointed or bladed article in a public place, unless it is a folding pocket knife that does not exceed three inches, which is immediately foldable at all times and does not lock, or if you are carrying a knife or bladed article that does not fall within this exemption, that you have good reason for doing so. And as I said in the previous video, it is not sufficient just to provide an explanation. There has to be a genuine good reason that will stand up to questioning. So with that in mind, let's get into some of the questions and the comments. So first of all, and in no particular order, lots of people ask the question whether it would be illegal to carry a knife around if you're going to a picnic or you're going camping. Now, generally speaking, it is going to depend on the situation and the knife that you're taking with you. For example, if you took with you a 12 inch chef's knife, that is likely to be seen as being over the top. On the other hand, if you are taking very much smaller knives with you on a picnic or camping, and they are intended to be used while eating, then that is much more likely to be seen as a good reason. Obviously, and I hope it goes without saying that if you were found wandering around a park by yourself with a knife, and you said that you had it because you were out for a picnic, that is not likely to be seen as a good reason. On the other hand, if you were found with family and friends and you are obviously sat there having a picnic and you are just eating your food, the facts are likely to speak for themselves. This is the point that I was raising in my previous video. If the police or a prosecutor didn't believe your good reason for having this knife, in other words, they didn't believe that you were at a picnic or going camping to eat, and they just found you wandering around with this knife and wanted to prosecute you, then it is likely that they are going to challenge your account as to why you had the knife with you, and just providing the explanation is not sufficient by itself. Lots of questions were raised about carrying an axe around. Now, obviously, an axe has a bladed edge. And therefore, if you are questioned, you are going to have to provide a good reason as to why you're carrying an axe around. If you can demonstrate that you have a good reason to have the axe with you, such as bushcraft or tree maintenance, this is much more likely to be seen as a good reason, rather than just walking around and having an axe with you. There have also been lots of questions and comments as to which portion of the blade is sharp and how the length of the blade is measured. So just to clear this issue up, the High Court considered this issue in 2005. So regardless of whether there is a two inch portion of the blade that is dull, followed by a three inch portion of the blade that is sharp, it is overall going to be a bladed article of the full length of the blade, regardless of which portions are sharp or not. And to quote Lord Justice Laws, in my judgment, we should create a great mischief if we construed this statute so as to invite argument in case after case as to whether or not the object in question was sharp. In other words, if you are found in possession of a bladed article, the court is not going to invite or consider argument as to whether a small portion of the blade is not sharp and therefore doesn't constitute part of the overall blade length. Other questions have arisen about a very short blade, say one inch in length, which is sharp but is fixed. Now again, this does not come within the definition of a folding pocket knife, and unless there is a good reason to have it on your possession, then it is going to be an offence under the Act to have it in your possession in a public place. Other questions have arisen about storing a bladed article that is normally used for work in a van whilst going to another destination, let's say going out for a drink, or just leaving it in the van overnight. This question was considered by the Queen's Bench Division in 2002, and held that the defendant, having stored a cleaver in his van 36 hours prior to going to get it sharpened, did not have a good reason to have it in a public place. In other words, don't store bladed articles in your van unnecessarily 
unless you are literally going to and from work and then take them out and put them in a safe storage space at home or at work. Finally, there have been a lot of questions about carrying a knife with you for some kind of sport, be that fishing, climbing or even scouting. Now again, I must stress that all of these scenarios are fact specific and you must seek formal legal advice if you intend to rely on it on an ongoing basis because you could be in trouble if your good reason doesn't stand up. But generally, in my view, if you are out sea fishing where the catch is very often eaten, then having a small knife with you to fillet the fish afterwards should be perfectly fine. On the other hand, if you are freshwater fishing where the catch is not normally eaten and is ordinarily thrown back, there will be less of a good reason and probably not a good reason to have a knife on you in that scenario because a folding pocket knife would be suffice for anything that you would ordinarily need to cut whilst out fishing. If you are a professional climber, for example, I might see that there is more of a good reason to have a knife with you for safety purposes in that scenario, but again, it is fact specific and depends on the circumstances. As for scouting, there may well be a defense of good reason for having a knife or knives in your possession for the purposes of education. Again, I would urge that it is fact specific. For example, if you have 25 12 inch knives with you, that is not going to be a good reason. But if the knives are much smaller and they are obviously used, in an educational environment and you can show that you are, for example, the leader of such a scout group and you are using these for education and taking all relevant precautions when the knives are not in use, this is much more likely to stand up as a good reason. So with all of this said, the courts will broadly apply the defense of good reason, but they will also test that good reason. So if you are going to carry a knife with you in any public place, there needs to be a very good reason and you need to be prepared to defend it. Also, and as a final warning, if your good reason does not stand up, you may well be facing a custodial sentence. So please do seek formal legal advice if you intend to rely on it, but I hope that this short additional video gives you a little bit more understanding to the questions raised to the previous video. Once again, thanks for watching and I'll see you next time.